And now, the general weather around Alaska. Hello and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Saturday, April 20th, 2024. And if you'd like additional weather information on top of what you get in this YouTube video, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. It brings you to a map of the continental U.S. with Hawaii and Alaska to the lower left. And I'd like to quick just take a look at this to give you some highlights of what's going on down the lower uh, 48. This Saturday afternoon, we have frost advisories, Ohio Valley back into Missouri, freeze warnings across Iowa and surrounding states, severe thunderstorm watch uh, for parts of uh, the Carolinas, uh, flood advisory, flood watches uh, into East Texas. And those are just a, a few of the things going on. No real major systems at the moment. Here in Alaska, the good news is uh, the rain situation is improving around Kodiak. Uh, there'll be some light uh, lingering areas of rain or rain showers tonight into Sunday, but uh, the threat of heavy rainfall and flooding uh, appears to be easing. As a result, there are no longer any watches or advisories for flooding in that area. We do, though, have a winter weather advisory for wind and some light snow around the Bering Strait into uh, St. Lawrence Island. Uh, we expect winds to pick up and uh, some light snow to fall that would reduce visibilities at times because some of these winds could gust as high as 55 miles an hour. And then back across east central areas of the mainland and down through the panhandle, it's just been a stunning past uh, week and into this weekend with sunshine and warm temperatures in the 60s. Eh, it's going to start to relax a bit. Temperatures are not going to be quite as warm as we go into tomorrow and certainly early next week as the ridge begins to weaken. Uh, there across northwest Canada where it's been centered the past several days. We are going to watch a little stronger low out toward the western Aleutians uh, take shape uh, Sunday into Monday and that'll be a dominant feature out there in the west. It's also gonna signal maybe a little more progressive weather pattern trying to set up again where the lows come up out of the North Pacific into the Bering Sea or up into the Gulf. So looking at uh, the Western Seward coastline, uh, Wales getting some light snow and blowing snow temperature there only 16 degrees. You can see that reduced visibility from the blowing snow. At least Kodiak City, the rain lighter now. We have had the ceilings of the clouds lift a bit, still a little bit of light fog temperature though kind of cool sitting at 39, but at least the threat of heavy rainfall and any notable flooding has, has passed, and that's good news. Northway up there along the Alcan border, not too far, sunny and mild, 53 degrees as of uh, mid-afternoon. Much of the uh, central eastern interior enjoying sunshine and warm temperatures. Petersburg in through the inner channels there of the central panhandle, sunny and warm, 60 degrees, and as I mentioned, Clawock. 68 degrees for Thursday and Friday afternoons, and it's back up around that mark again today. So uh, been a very warm period in uh, areas of the panhandle with the sun and thanks to that ridge of high pressure. So as far as any hazardous weather, the thing of only real note is the snow and blowing snow here along the Bering Strait, the north and the west side of the Seward Peninsula, including Shishmaref, Wales, Teller down to Port Clarence, and then also uh, Savunga and Gamble on the north side there of St. Lawrence Island. Expect a period of light snow and blowing snow uh, as we go through tonight and into Sunday. And looking at uh, another thing going on, we've had a multiple series of weak coronal mass ejections come off of the sun. They've been kind of slow to arrive, but they will continue to arrive here over the course of the weekend and maybe early in the week. This could trigger some geomagnetic storms that could enhance auroras. Now, the only thing working against us are a couple of things. The full pink moon of April occurs Tuesday afternoon on the 23rd. So we're just a couple of nights away from full moon. So that's gonna provide some added light as interference. And then the other issue is the amount of growing daylight as we get toward the end of April in Alaska, that's begins to be the uh, end of the uh, aurora viewing season simply by virtue of the fact that the growing daylight and shrinking nighttime is a problem there, especially uh, above the Arctic Circle where the sun will not set uh, soon. And so with that being the case, aurora's viewing season doesn't start up again until later in August and certainly by the time we get into fall in September and October. Another thing too this week, winding down now, 
It is Flood Safety Awareness Week for Alaska. The river breakup season is almost here. So it's good to be prepared, stay safe. So you wanna move and safeguard property before high water and ice breaks up along the rivers if you're in that situation. Have extra food, batteries, medical supplies on hand in case supplies get cut off for a little while. And know your community safety plan, have an emergency shelter locations where to go or have a neighbor that you can rely on in case the water and ice does become a, a problem at your location. And then once that uh, the flooding occurs and if you have ice flows, please stay out of those. That can be really dangerous. But uh, looking at what we have in terms of this moisture feed that was giving Kodiak all that heavy rainfall, it's beginning to break down, not as organized as it was a couple few days ago. Nevertheless, still some lingering areas of light rain and light rain showers will be possible from the tip here of the Kenai Peninsula down to around Kodiak Island. And then as that moisture winds up back up through the Bering Strait, there can be some light snow, not heavy snowfall, an inch or two at most, but combined with strong winds that could gust 40, 50 plus miles an hour, that could create uh, some blowing snow and reduced visibility. But otherwise, that ridge of high pressure, notice all the clear sky still here, across the panhandle into the eastern and central uh, mainland. Some of this moisture will try to creep northward tomorrow. Not impossible, there could be a few light showers try to break out over the southern part of the panhandle as we go through tomorrow afternoon. That would be Sunday afternoon and night, and then into Monday. But the next notable weather system, we have a piece of energy coming down out of eastern Russia, linking up with a low coming out of the North Pacific. And that is gonna be the next uh, weather maker out in this region uh, later Sunday and especially early in the week. So looking at the current map, we have kind of things backwards here because of all the warm air over the Panhandle, Northwest Canada. This is the direction it would have to go to be a warm front. And then the cooler air coming in from the north, usually it's reversed. In the wintertime, we have the milder air coming up as a warm front out of the North Pacific up into the Gulf. But uh, this is kind of more reversed toward more of a summer-like uh, setup. We do have a weak cold front working its way through the eastern Arctic uh, and eastern north slope. It has potentially a few light snow showers or flurries with it, and it will bring a little colder air along areas of the far north. This collection of weak lows, nothing much to them. Their centers are pretty high at 105, 106 inches. But as we go through time, the time we get into later tonight and Sunday morning, we still have these weak lows lingering from around Haida Gwaii back toward the Western Gulf and south of there. And here's one piece of energy that links up to another. This low, this will become uh, the better low here as we go through uh, Monday. Weak trough, that's all that's left of that stationary boundary that was feeding all the moisture back toward the entrance of Cook Inlet and Kodiak Island. And then for the interior, still some areas of clearing and sunshine. Uh, but some clouds there along the Brooks Range, maybe a few light snow showers at the east end into uh, northwest Canada. And by the time we get into Monday afternoon, we have a couple of different lows. Uh, one coming up out of the North Pacific, south of the Gulf, not real organized. This is the stronger low. This will have gale force winds around it, along with a mix of precipitation, even some storm force gusts possible. But the central pressure will bottom out around 970 millibars. And this low is just ever so slowly kind of expands in coverage across the central lower uh, Bering Sea as well as the Aleutians and then these fronts will just slowly work their way eastward as the low works east and then southeastward through the week. It's not going to be moving very fast. And then that cold front up there in the far north just kind of washes out into northwest Canada and then we'll see just a reinforcement of a little colder air there along the Arctic coast as we start out the early week. So looking at temperatures, most areas are gonna see readings stay above freezing tight throughout the Panhandle, as well as Anchorage Bowl southward through the Kenai. Of course, Copper River Basin dipping down below freezing at 22 there, Glen Allen, and then Sunday afternoon, most temperatures 50s, still could see some lower 60s in parts of the Panhandle, uh, and again, Anchorage can get some sun maybe near 50, but otherwise still relatively comfortable mild compared to what it's been. It's been a slow spring to unwind to get started here. And uh, again, back here through the panhandle, maybe a few more clouds Monday morning, temperatures mid 30s to low 40s. Again, much of the south central areas along the coast up into uh, the lower Matsu Valley should be able to stay above freezing. And then daytime highs, maybe not quite as mild. There could be some clouds around with temperatures in the 40s, maybe 51 there, Glen Allen and Portel Keetna. 
and generally 50s now in through the panhandle instead of uh, those 60s that you've enjoyed uh, this past week and weekend. So notice colder temperatures along the north slope, northwest Arctic coast, Utqiagvik down through Point Lay a little bit below zero. Nighttime lows getting a bit below freezing most areas in through the um, middle upper Yukon Valley and uh, upper Tanana Valley. Temperatures on Sunday afternoon still 50s, could be near 60 at say Fairbanks and on over toward Eagle. Uh, otherwise, temperatures stay in the single digits along the northwest Arctic coast uh, and western part of the North Slope. Teens along the northern side here of the Seward Peninsula. And then lows do get a bit colder and expand eastward here across the North Slope and Arctic coast. Readings a little bit below zero. Nighttime lows back near freezing there at Fairbanks. Um, otherwise, you know, typically you get a little below freezing this time of year where there are any clear skies. Still some readings though in the 55 to near 60 degree range from Fairbanks on over toward Eagle and Northway. As we go west along uh, Norton Sound, temperatures will be a little bit above freezing for highs mid to upper 30s, but colder below freezing there from say, Savunga uh, at St. Lawrence across on up into the northwest. That's where the cooler or colder temperatures are going to be here uh, coming up through the short term period. Areas of the southwest, we're looking at lows near freezing at Bethel all the way on up Anvik and on over toward uh, McGrath. Near or just above freezing in through the eastern Aleutians. Temperatures could get up in the 40s as warm as 56 though at McGrath on Sunday afternoon. And then Monday uh, morning lows will generally be below freezing. Uh, the Pribilovs at St. Paul up to along the lower Yukon uh, coastline and daytime highs cool a little bit up here, 50-ish for McGrath. And then as we extend down along the uh, Alaska Peninsula into the eastern and central Aleutians, we anticipate highs low to maybe mid 40s at best. So what we want to look at is this temperature outlook here for the end of the month, April 26th through the 30th. This would imply a ridge of high pressure, the axis kind of just kind of running like this from northwest Canada into the oh, central northern mainland. So temperatures could average above normal, Arctic Village, Fairbanks, Northway along the Alcan border. And then a bit so here, especially inner channels, northern parts of the Panhandle. And then near normal temperatures across much of the southwest, southern and southwest uh, mainland, including the Alaska Peninsula. And precipitation may average a little bit above normal for this time of year, given this is normally one of the drier times of the year. So that doesn't really mean a ton of precipitation, but it would imply then that the weather pattern, we could see the areas of low pressure coming up out of the North Pacific into the Bering and then up in, uh, from the North Pacific into the Gulf. That would why we would see a tendency to have precipitation average above normal over south central southeast mainland into the panhandle here to close out the month. So does that mean will there be any more snow in some areas? Anchorage is just one tenth of an inch away from having its second snowiest winter on record and just 1.9 inches away from uh, all time season snowfall record. And come tomorrow Sunday afternoon, I'll talk a little more about that as well as give you the latest snowfall total I got for Valdez. It's uh, considerably more than Anchorage, so stay tuned.